next, we've spent a lot of time talking to people outside CERN, but we haven't talked to the people inside CERN. So here we have a link with Atlas, and we should have Steve. Steve, can you hear us? Well, hello. Well, hello. How are you guys doing over there in the globe? We're doing fantastic. How's life in At Atlas? <laughs> oh, it's been fantastic. We've been watching a show tonight here from the control room, a fantastic show. Uh, you took us to the South Pole, uh, you took us to NASA, and you took us to places a little bit closer than that. It's been great. I really appreciate it. Well, so do we, in fact. We've been so spoiled tonight. But what's been happening at Atlas, meanwhile? Have you still had students passing through? Oh, we had, we had quite a few students. Uh, we had three shifts of students, and they basically took care of our detector tonight. Uh, we took a lot of very good data. And I, I think it was better than ever. I think we might have to get more students to come back here. Steve, are you running right now? Uh, we are getting ready for uh, beam. They're, they're going to be injecting soon, and within the next hour, we're going to have collisions. But uh, I tell you, I, I got something on my mind. Uh, I, I've been watching this show and seeing that pretty much all the experiments that we've been connected to have something in common. And, and that's that they're all looking for this stuff that we haven't seen yet called dark matter. I, I, I've heard that they've said that more than 90%, in fact, of, of the world out there we haven't seen yet, and it's dark matter. And so I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is and to <laughs> challenge all of my colleagues here on the LHC and in the other experiments uh, around the globe, at the bottom of the globe, at the top of the globe, uh, to say that I, th I think my experiment's going to find dark matter first. I don't know what they think about that. But I'd also would like to know what the students think about that. So I want to launch something called the Cosmo Bet. And that Cosmo Bet is the following. If you're a, a student, let's say 19 years and under, I challenge you to write two pages explaining which experiment you think of all the ones that are described here this evening or even another one if, if you can think of one uh, which one of those experiments is going to be the first to discover uh, what's behind dark matter what 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 gives us dark matter what is dark matter which is the first one that's going to make that discovery steve why should and, they and do why? this what's the bet what do they win well i'll tell you what I'm going to give them something. We have a lot of great stuff here at Atlas, and I bet my colleagues in the other experiments do as well. We have a lot of nice educational material. We have DVDs. We also have baseball caps. Uh, we have uh, books, beautiful books that have been made about our experiment and about uh, the physics. And I bet I can convince my colleagues in the other experiments to load up a bunch of these things into some bags. And I'm willing to say that we could fill up 10 bags full of goodies from all the experiments. And so I would say the, the top 10, the top 10 responses, and that's going to be judged by my peers, myself. We might get some journalists, some other experts in the fields to read the essays. I would say that we'll pick the top 10, give them a goodie bag, and I'll go further than that. I'll go further than that. I think that the best response, the best response should get a trip to CERN to visit us and to spend some time here uh, with physicists and to learn a bit more about the laboratory and all the things that go on here. How's that, Mick? That sounds really cool. That means they would actually get inside the control room where you are now. Absolutely. In fact, I think they're doing a better job than us, so the, the more the, the better. Okay, so let's just repeat this. This competition, this Cosmobet competition, is open to anybody who is 19 or under from anywhere in the world. And what they have to do is write two pages and choose one of the experiments and say why they think this experiment is going to discover dark matter. Is that correct? Discover dark matter exactly. first. Exactly. And they can see uh, all of these instructions on the, on the home page, on the Researcher's Night home page. And they'll see there that they have two weeks to do this. We'll give them a couple weeks, because I know they've got a lot of homework to do as well. 
Uh, to get those essays in, they can send an email, and the address is listed on the home page. So the deadline is two weeks, and we'll know the answer within how long, Steve? Well, it's a panel of experts, so it could take some time. I can't <laughs> make any promises. Okay, to track down the website, if you need to, you can go to the CERN public homepage and click on the link from there. So you've got two weeks if you're 19 and under, and some fantastic prizes to win. Thanks, Steve. That's Steve, great. do they have to send their entries in in English? No, any language will do. Paula will be able to translate anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Any language will do. Thank you, Steve, and good luck with the, uh, with the experiment. Okay, thank you very much. So I think we're going to move around. CMS. CMS, can you hear us? We saw you briefly. Yeah. Can you see up here? No, we see we it's can black. Hear, we can hear you, <laughs> oh. but we can't see you. Okay. There's something. We're, we're in the dark. We well, the you can tell us what you want to know, and I'll we'll try to convey now. it in words. We can see you now. Andre, what's going on in the CMS control room right now? Well, right now it's pretty quiet. We've had, you know, a lot of kids coming through and they did a lot of interesting work and we would like to show you the work they did. Sure. So this is one of the posters that they produced tonight. So what, what did so they have to do? What was the, it was CMS at CERN, yeah? Yeah, so they, they did different posters. They just sat with the shifters and they went through what it means to be on shifted CMS. And then they had the free form of, you know, collage, collating pictures or describing what they saw. I mean, one of these has a particularly interesting picture of the person on the safety shift saying that nobody, it's this one right here, in case if you can get it on the left. The one saying, nobody messes with Zoltan. <laughs> I actually know Zoltan, actually. He's a good friend of mine. <laughs> Would you agree with the yeah, statement? So yeah, probably. Yeah. He's the guy who keeps CMS safe. Don't mess with him. <laughs> okay. How okay. many young people have you had there tonight, Andre? Well, I don't know exactly because there were so many I couldn't count them, but it's been more than 15, around 15. Right. Okay, and how old were they? 25. I'm told it's 25. How old were they? Well, 12 to 20. Okay. But uh, mostly were 15 year olds, and uh, they had lots of questions. Like, how can you get all this data through? I mean, how do you fit it all? They were very interested. And the result is pretty impressive. I mean, what they made out of the information uh, shadowing the, the, the shifters. I mean, we have uh, somehow 15 posters uh, which will be exposed in the next uh, days uh, somewhere uh, in a nice place, it's building 40 maybe. So then everybody can have a look at to it. So next time I come to see the CMS, I will see these on the wall somewhere. Definitely, for sure. Okay, thanks very much guys and thank you for looking after these young people this evening and thank you for joining us so late. Thank you. Yeah, we'd just like to have more. See ya. <laughs> okay, I think we're going to Alice next, yes? Can you hear us? Can you see me? I can see you and hear you. Fantastic. Hello. Hello. So how's, how's your evening been? Beautiful, beautiful. We had a lot of kids like everybody else, more than the others. We had 30 plus. And um, they have come here in five, six batches and we assigned them to shifters. We showed them what we were doing and they even got to click a bit <laughs> on some uh, less critical consoles and um, all in all I think they were very happy and now we have sent a team to prepare the goodies that uh, Steve has, had promised so now we will have to put something together as well. So you're going to participate in the Cosmo bet as well? Of course, of course. Okay, that's really kind, thank yeah. you. What have, what have the Out young people... The front line. Have the young people produced any material for you, like posters or anything like that? No, not in our case. They were too busy understanding the physics, so we couldn't get them to do any drawing. Okay, well, thank you very, very much for joining us. And uh, again, yeah, same, same goes for you. Good luck with the experiment. We're going to move on to LHCB now, I think. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night.
Good night. So LHCB, can you hear us? Hi. Yes, this is Tara. I can hear you fine. Tara, lovely to. I can. I can hear you. Your picture's a little bit distorted, but we're getting there. And Tara, yes, how, how's, same for me. How's the evening been at LHCB? Well, I actually arrived here right towards the end, but I've been told that we've had loads of kids here, and in fact, six groups all together, and they have been running the place. So they have actually been operating our runs, starting runs, stopping runs, telling our shift controller when it's safe to switch the detectors on and off, that sort of thing. So they've been doing a really good job for us. And what's the age group you've had, Tara? It's been between the ages of about 12 and 18. So just the right age, I think, to start getting involved in physics and rapidly become experts, more experts than the rest of us. And what's going on there at the moment? Well, as you can probably see, if you have the picture now, it's very, very quiet. So we're on the night shift at the moment. The shift has changed over at, um, at 11 p.m. And we're, going, we're just waiting now for LHC to inject more beams. We expect to have physics tonight. We expect to take a lot more data. So we're just quiet now, waiting for that to happen. And when it happens, we'll store all the data we can and then analyze it. How many people does it take to run the LHCB experiment? It takes two people. Or we can accommodate more, like this afternoon with all our visitors. There, I don't know how many of them managed to make the whole thing work, but they all did together. And, and Tara, we've, we've spent a lot of time this evening talking about cosmology, talking about astrophysics. I wonder, uh, what, what can LHCB offer that's, uh, you know, what, what, does, what does LHCB be bring to cosmology? Well, our particular angle, what we're interested in, in in this experiment is the question of antimatter. And the problem with antimatter is that there just doesn't seem to be any of it around in the universe. But half the universe, we think, was made of it when it all started in the Big Bang. And the reason we're here in the universe, the reason the universe evolved to make it look the way it does with stars, with galaxies, and with us as well, is due to a tiny, tiny difference in the behavior of matter and antimatter. I mean, really extremely tiny, no more than one part in a billion. But it's that very tiny difference which has governed the whole way the universe has developed from the Big Bang to here. And that's something that we really want to understand because it will let us understand much more about the universe. That's the question that we've built our experiment to try and answer. So that's the angle we bring to these big questions. Okay, Tara, thank you very much for joining us so late. And thank you to all the people who've been looking after those young people throughout the evening. And like we say to all of the LHC experiments, good luck with all the, all the uh, data analysis that you're doing. And we waiting to hear some results from you. Thank you. Now we're going to move on to Totem, I think. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Hi Totem. Totem. Hello. What Hi. is Totem? Okay. So, can you see me? We can yes. see you and hear you. What is Totem? Okay. What is Totem? What is Totem? Okay, we can ask to Nicola Torini here, one of our physicists. Okay, Totem is a small experiment in respect to the other uh, experiment that we have seen before, but uh, its, its measurement is very crucial because uh, its aim is to measure the cross session of the proton proton interaction at very high energy, so the LHC energies. What we know right now is that the protons are increasing in size when, when they're accelerated to high energy, and actually we don't know why and how, so many models and so on. But this is a very crucial uh, information uh, for every aspect, uh, even this cosmological aspect, because uh, if, you, if you look uh, uh, how the models on the development of the, uh, the cosmos are related to the cross-section of the interaction of high energy particles, uh, you can understand uh, how this measurement is very important. Although, uh, also for the uh, uh, cosmic ray physics, uh, if you think that uh, we are looking to uh, protons that are hitting the sphere, 
uh, our measurement is crucial to understand the, the flux of, uh, of this kind of particles uh, and so on. So this is uh, our, our aim. And to do this, we need to have a very special experiment. Uh, um, like uh, it's not like the other that are like onions of uh, of detectors. Our yeah. detectors is <laughs> is uh, developed uh, in in a very long base. We have uh, small tiny detectors which are in the in the beam pipe uh, at 200,000, uh, 220,000, uh, meters from the interaction point here at CMS 0.5, and we want to see the small scatters of the protons. Uh, each other uh, that just uh, uh, deviate a little bit, uh, like millimeter, from the, the, the beam axis. Uh, for that, uh, we have this uh, special uh, detector that are called Roman pots, and they they have to move very close to the beam. So they are moving uh, detectors that are going close, close to the beam, so that we can see the small, tiny deviations from the proton uh, from the, the beam from the scattered protons. Did you say they are inside the beam pipe? Yeah, yeah. They are inside the beam pipe. They have a, a second vacuum, but they are, they are in vacuum, yes. Okay. What have you been doing there this evening? Uh, this evening was very, very, very good. We, we had a lot of students, and they were really interested, and uh, they were between uh, 10 and 20 years old. And uh, we welcomed them with different uh, presentation of Totem. And here there was Virginia, Nicola, and other people uh, just uh, you know there to uh, answer their question. And they were really interactive and really interested. And probably some of them they will be future physicists. So we are really happy about that. Thank you. That sounds great. Uh, are you going to be running all night there? Well, uh, I think yes. Because uh, what do you think, Nicola? Because we we have. We are waiting for the beam. Yeah. Actually, actually, our queue have to be even displaced because we need one people even in the central uh, CCC yeah. control room because uh, the movement of the pots inside the beam pipe uh, it's uh, something that should be operated from there. Okay. So we need the one there, one crew yeah. here, and so on. It's more complicated, and we have a small group. Yeah. So thank are. you. Thank you very much for joining us. I think we're going to try to go to the CERN Central Control Room now to see what's going on there. So thank you very much for, you, for what you've done for us this evening and uh, good luck with your experiment as well. Thank you very much to you. Bye, Mike. Bye. 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 So, CCC, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, so this is the CERN control room for those uh, those watching us on the webcast. I have no image here. Oh. Pardon? You see me well? Very well, yes. Yeah. Ah, yes, okay. Okay, I have now the image on the, on the PC. Yes, please go on. So what is happening now at the LHC? We've been talking to uh, Atlas, CMS, Alice, LHCB and Totem. And each one of them have all told us that they're waiting for beam from the LHC. Yes, as usual. <laughs> okay, now uh, the beam uh, with which we had filled the machine before was lost because of a problem on a on a circuit in uh, sector seven eight. Uh, so the the beam was dampened and the, we had to run down the magnets. But at the same time, we noticed that there was a problem also on another circuit, on one, uh, one main dipole. There was a quench heater pile supply which was discharging and, and it had to be uh, replaced. So in fact, we, we, we went in access for the machine. There was a technician entering, repairing the, the protection of the, of the magnet. Now it's out, the, the machine is closed again, and we are, uh, well, my colleagues are almost ready to uh, restart. Uh, well, they will, uh, they will have to recycle the machine and then restart the feeling of the machine and then ramping up again, hopefully for another feel of good physics this night. So typically on, uh, on, a, on, a, on the night shift, how many people do you have in the LHC control room? How many people can run yeah, the LHC? Uh, 
Yeah, normally in the four uh, islands we have two people per island, so means eight people in total. Uh, here in the LSC island, for example, we have one engineer in charge and one operator, which are responsible of running the machine during the night. Of course, uh, if there is any issue, if we need the, we need an expert from a, from another team, we don't hesitate to call them. They, we, they have always people which are available, which are in PK service. So if we need, we can call them. And also there is a machine coordinator which we refer to and we can contact all, also during, uh, during the night at 4 o'clock, it happened yesterday or the day before, so there is no, no problem. But normally, here at the CCC, during the night is, is, is normally it's calm because there are only eight people and we, well, uh, of course, uh, when, the, when the sun goes down uh, and the, the sleep comes, uh, the, the, amb the ambience is more, is more quiet, less noisy above all. Okay, you mentioned four islands. For the people who've not been following you before, one of the islands is the LHC. What are the other three islands? Yes, I, I try to turn the camera. If, tell me if you see something. Well, if you, you, you certainly see. Over there you may see the island where the cryogenics is controlled and where the technical uh, infrastructure uh, experts are as well, where they receive all the alarms uh, from ventilation, electricity, or whatever else. Uh, over there, there is the island where the injectors and the proton synchrotron uh, is, uh, let's say, Linux booster proton synchrotron is controlled. And over there, oops, I cannot turn anymore the, the camera, but over there there was a, the first island, which is the one where the super proton synchrotron and the extraction lines toward the LAC are controlled. So there are four islands, four islands where uh, we have uh, other colleagues working and providing uh, uh, the beam for the LAC, but also for other experiments, for example, for uh, uh, CERN to Grand SAS or in SPS and other, many other fixed target experiences. We okay. Can, we can see a lot of screens on the wall behind you. What what exactly are these screens showing? Yes, uh, I don't know. Yes, I try to turn a bit. Okay, from uh, if I can describe you, from the left uh, upper row, uh, the first one is uh, indicates the status of the cryogenics. Uh, as you may see, everything is green. I hope you can you can uh, you can see. Uh, the second one indicates the status of the LSC beam dumping system. Uh, you may recognize. I try to zoom. I don't know honestly. Tell me if it works, but uh, should should be should be working. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Uh, do, do you hear me? Yes. Ah, okay, sorry. So, and the, the third column, uh, the blue line and the red line indicates the status of uh, the presence of bin 1 and bin 2. Now the lines are flat. I don't know whether you can recognize them, but the lines are flat because, the, of course, there is no beam in the machine. The others, of course, there is uh, on the second row, the fourth screen is the, our well-known page 1, where we exchange information with the, with the experiments and we put, we communicate the status of the machine and we have the main information about the beam, energy, intensity of both beams, uh, status of the machine at the moment is uh, still, well, may, they have not changed, it's still up and down, they will soon change in, uh, in pre-cycle. And uh, on the fifth one, on the second floor, on the second um, row is the is the intensity of the beam, which is now noisy because, they, of course, we have no, no beam in. So all relevant information for the, for the operation of the, of the, of the LAC and also to, to survey the status also of the, of the inject, of the cryogenics, and so all the systems which are important for the LAC. Okay, okay thank you. Thank One you. of the very interesting things for the people who are watching on the web is that uh, these screens actually are available in real time on the web, at least some of them. Sure, the status of the sure, proton synchrotron, the super proton synchrotron, and the LHC itself, you can actually go and look in real time and you can actually see the status of those machines. Sure, sure. Indeed, they are published and open uh, to, to everybody, so they can go there uh, while following. Uh, well, it's quite easy from the main page of CERN, and they can see all the vistas, all the screens which are used, uh, some of the screens which are used here in the CCC, and check them by, well, check by themselves the status of the machine. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thank, thank you for staying up thank so late you. with us. Uh, the guys behind you... It's their job, they're going to be there all night. We're going to close down the, uh, the, the Nuit des Chercheurs now, I think. 
I think that's correct. Yeah. So we're going to say yeah, big sure. thank you to everybody you who's to taken part. Big thank you to all our collaborators around the world. I don't know whether they can see us or hear us. Big thank you to everybody who's joined us on, on the web. And we look forward to seeing you again for another webcast sometime in the future. Kate, do you want to add anything? Just that this has been a fantastic opportunity for CERN to link up with other places in Europe, all through a European project known as BEST, which was being a European scientist today. So hopefully this is the start of many more linking ups with researchers' nights. Of over, For example, just tonight there's been more than 250 cities doing researchers' nights. So it's been great for us to be a small part of that. And, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we and have. And we hope we've stimulated some young people to continue their scientific education because that's what it's all about. Exactly. So thank you, everybody. And a big thank you to the technical team. Yes. It's been an exciting evening for us. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.